scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The decision to walk on your mind. Immediately you sort the issue of your spiritual life. The next part of call is not your hands, it's your mind. The decision to contend for superior belief systems. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, the Bible did not say so he will become, so he is. As he thinketh in his heart, that means your physical reality will inevitably be a report card an attestation of your level of mental transformation now this is the balance because most times haven't haven't stressed the issue of godliness and loving god there is a mistake that is being made in church because we downplay also the place of mental transformation so we have so many people who love the lord but continue to make mediocre decisions that reflect that base thinking. You must transit in your mind. Even Jesus, Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5, the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He did not just, because he was the son of God, there was a belief system that he had. Your perspectives, your viewpoint, your thinking, you can never rise above and beyond your belief system your life will be a messless reflection of your belief system mediocrity is a life that comes in honor to a particular belief system poverty is the resultant effect of a particular belief system failure and lack of influence is it comes in honor all of the ills that we find come in honor here's what the bible says that these signs shall follow them that believe that means i don't need to go into your mind to know what you believe i look at the sign following you because the bible says the sign will come in honor to what you believe so if i see failure and poverty and bitterness and anger they are coming in honor to what you believe you don't drive them by saying leave me you change what you believe and they will change Are we together? You must contend for renewal and transformation. Believers hear me. Scattered in this beautiful hall and outside and even following online are people who have come from different parts of this nation and around the world. Yoruba, Igbo, Northern and South South and all of that. And let me tell you this. I'm sure that your pastors are, are experts in that area and so I'm not even going to delve into it. That our mindsets are shaped by the following factors. Number one, culture. Culture. Number two, your past experiences. Number three, your circle of friends and your influence. All of these are shapers of your mindset. Chances are excellent, respectfully speaking, that if you came from, say, a polygamous family, you will not be too far from things like jealousy and selfishness and envy. 
imagine that you become a worker in church and a leader in church still carrying that Egypt with you you will turn that church to look like the house you are coming from you will first create a party for yourself and fight any other person who is not in your group it doesn't mean you are bad you are a victim of a mental construct that came from your past there are people, for instance, who have suffered for everything they ever had in life. Ten years to finish primary school. Eight years to finish a four-year course. When you teach on favor, they look at you and say, you are joking, let's share the grace. You are talking nonsense there. If you teach on possibilities, they will hear. But favor, no. It has not been captured in my experience. The house of God is supposed to be like a threshing floor where you you open up your mindset to to that 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 editing by the spirit of god it says in romans chapter 12 and verse 2 it says and be ye be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind many believers are saved but they cannot move past the gate of salvation because their mindsets do not allow for God to use them the way he intends to use. There are many preachers who remain small. And they think their smallness is a reflection of God's inability. Your mindset is like the container that will receive that jar of oil. Remember the story of the, the Shunammite woman? The problem was never the oil. It was that the vessel was small. The prophet gave her counsel, go and borrow vessel. He said, borrow not a few. You don't need to borrow oil. The oil will always look like the vessel carrying it. Let me challenge someone, therefore, that this is the year you will go back to buying books. Buy the truth and sell it not. Buy, there are disciplines you have to give yourself. There are videos you must watch. If not, your eyes will not see sleep. Discipline yourself. Tear down some negative pictures in your room that continue to spell evil and war and all of those kinds of things. I am very sensitive to atmosphere. There are things you will never find around me because there are multitudes that are depending on the decisions that I take. And it is my responsibility under God to create the atmosphere that makes creativity and growth possible for me. I invest in my atmosphere. Are you learning? You are staying with neighbors that are causing you trouble. At the end of this meeting, we will release a grace for you to get out of that place. And look for a place where you can, you can roll on the floor in peace and serve God. And anybody who comes under your roof and doesn't behave well, send them away in peace. Don't, don't say, oh, the, the Bible says, no, 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 God is not stupid. There is a protocol. Don't bring somebody into your house who does not give you peace. The Bible says the Lord himself will give you peace always by all means. There are many believers who continue to trap themselves and they don't create that atmosphere that allows for creativity because they ship all kinds of troublemakers around their lives in the name of relatives, in the name of all kinds of people. You don't have to fight them. Let them go in peace. If you are under my roof, you must serve my God and subscribe to the modus operandi you met. You can't bring your rules into my house. No. Are we learning? The decision to contend for superior beliefs. There are some of you, your businesses should not be at that level. Except that you have not seen further. Because it is as far as your eyes can see that it is given to you. Not as far as it is available. The one your eye sees is what you are, you, are, you are given. Make up your mind that this is the year you will expand beyond the limitations of culture. Beyond the limitations. Don't say I am from so, so, so. No. If you came from a poor family, do not bring a poor family out of you. If you came from a weak family, do not bring a weak family out of you. Be the bridge between the old and the new. I made up my mind it was a decision that every men mental construct I would need to have to allow me excel at a global level. 
God has done his part by calling me and anointing me and granting me access to the Holy Spirit. There is the labor dimension of faith as a commitment that you believe in what God has called you to do. If he has anointed me to speak to kings and to nations and to nobles, I must pay the price to build the mental capacity that befits that realm. Don't sit down and just wish and hope and wish and hope and wish and hope and then remain mediocre. No. Make up your mind that you will not be in any atmosphere on this earth and feel ashamed. No. It is a commitment. Businessman, that even if you stand before Bill Gates, you will only be inspired, not intimidated. No. No. The difference between you and anybody you admire is number one, the level and quality of information they have. Number two, the level of relationships that they have that support that mental transition. And then number three, the level of engracing upon them. Everybody you, ad you admire, you can even surpass if you are willing to make the decision to work on your mind. Your mind can go where your body is not yet qualified to go. Your mind does not need a visa. Your mind can travel with the Holy Spirit and tap into infinite possibilities. I was preparing for ministry when I was in one room. Don't wait for anybody to come and invite you and bless you. From where you are, lift up your eyes. You don't need a visa to lift up your eyes. And now, technology has made it easy with the comfort of your phone, you can access materials that expand your thinking. Lay your hands on your head and declare expansion. That this year, my mind expand, expand. You are praying, my mind expand. In the name of Jesus, expand in ministry, expand in business for the sake of his majesty. A small and a mediocre life. I'm not part of you again. I make a decision in the name of Jesus. Not a carnal decision. Not a sensual decision. A spiritual decision. The discipline to submit my mind to knowledge. The discipline to submit my mind to learning. I will learn. I will unlearn. I will relearn. I will learn. I will unlearn. I will relearn. In the name of Jesus. Local champion living. Be far from my life. I am ready to attain a global scale in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen to me. You see, if you don't rise to a global scale, you will spend your life in pain and jealousy and comparison. You will never see traffic in the air. There is enough room, no matter how big the plane is. Traffic is only when you are on land. Rise to a level where everyone is a champion. This petty jealousy, petty fighting, petty pointing fingers. There is a realm that you can rise above it. Are you learning? Make that decision today. Apostle, I have only 10,000. You don't need clothes. Go and buy materials. Make up your mind that there is no fake life. Don't fake what can be real. Invest in your mind. I have 10,000, I will not pretend. I know by faith I have everything in Christ. But I will use that 10,000 and buy data and sit down and begin to invest. Lord, I know that the food my mother did not eat in her youth, she will eat it before she sees you. Shalika paru katasia. You buy a notebook and you are writing. And heaven is supervising the things you are doing. Sooner or later, your current level will run away from you. And the new that you are embracing with your transformation will come to you. Can I tell you, success is not what you pursue. Success is what you attract by your becoming. Your becoming is greater than your doing. Learn this. Business people, learn this. It is not in doing, it is your becoming. The people that do know their God, they shall be, then they shall do. Our focus is on doing. What do I do to prosper? No. It's what do I become? You do from a standpoint of your becoming. Your mindset is greater than your activity. Please do not forget this. Stay and build yourself. Stay and work on yourself. Be strict on yourself. When you watch people who run the 100 meters dash, do you know they don't train them with 100 meters? 
Go and ask any coach. You can't train somebody to run on 100 meters with 100 meters. You can do 150 or 200. So his mind is already fixed on 150. So that even when he reaches 100, he has to stop himself. The mind says, continue. You were not trained with this small a distance. So stretch yourself. So that even when you have crossed the global scale, your mind is still pushing you. It is when you stand with your contemporaries, you see the excellency of your transformation. Please make up your mind that you will drive shame through diligence. Drive shame far from your life. Number three. Are you learning? Hmm. What is the third decision you must make for an excelling life? Number three. The decision to discover and fulfill your assignment. That is the third destiny decision that you must make dear. The decision to discover and fulfill your assignment. Let me hurry up so that we conserve time. John chapter 4 and verse 34. John 4 and verse 34. Jesus said unto them, my meat, that means my satisfaction, comes from doing the will of him that sent me, David's Christian Center, and to finish his work. Dr. Miles Munro of Blessed Memory will always say that the wealthiest place is not the gold mines in South Africa and Congo, DRC and all of these places, not even the oil mines in Nigeria and the Middle East. That the wealthiest place is the symmetry where dreams were never actualized, books that should have been written that were never written. And his goal was that he would die empty. And even in death, he cheated death. You must make up your mind that this is the year you will stop living a purposeless life. Where someone calls you in the morning and says, Bros, what is for today? Say, I'm just sitting down. And say, can you come? And that, that's what defines your day. Purpose-driven people almost need prayer to sleep. Because there is something consuming them. There's no distraction. Many of you got into trouble because of idleness. There is a way you can be so busy, even the devil will wait for you. Because your level of focus and determination is such that nothing will bend your focus. Vision gives your life focus. You are busy but not doing many things. Very busy. If you find yourself doing many things, it's a sign that you've not found your place in life. You should be busy, but not doing many things. Are you learning? John chapter 9 and verse 4. John chapter 9 and verse 4. Jesus said unto them, He said, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. Look up please. There is timing to your assignment. Not every time is convenient imagine a man who discovers purpose at 80 chances are excellent that that man may not do so much because the energy the relationships his colleagues may have been long dead so all the things that support his feeling his assignment are almost not there the night cometh when no man can walk again today we are seated here because pastor kingsley and his dear wife found their place in God's agenda and we are all recipients and beneficiaries of their purposefulness make up your mind that you are not going to go and see him without giving out what he put within you to your generation it was a decision that I made many years ago and I'm grateful to God that I made that decision Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 lo I come in the volume of the book 10 7 hebrews 10 7 lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will someone after this after the church conference you should go and start your own retreat your own three-day retreat lock yourself somewhere and flog it out with destiny someone calls you and tell them please call me after three days there's something I need to sort. Lord, I'm tired of escorting people. 
I'm tired of acting like I know where I'm going. Because you see, your honor is in the discovery of your place. A bird does not struggle in the air, but if the bird enters sea, it will struggle there. Many of you, you are struggling as though God did not call and anoint and bless you because you have not found your place. The decision to discover and fulfill your assignment I made up my mind that I was not going to spend my life doing so many things. That which God has called me to do, I will do with all my heart. Hallelujah. All my days on earth, I will await. The moment that I see you face to face. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Listen, your honor is in your call. Your prosperity is in your call. Your relevance is in your call. Brother, sister, the Spirit of God is speaking to you. This is not just a preacher speaking. You will live your life in jealousy and pain and anger. This man was my classmate. This one was this. So what? He was just lucky. When you find your place, you can celebrate others because there is security in your place. When you see people who are always pointing fingers and always speaking negatively to others, search well. They are gallivanting around the corridors of destiny. They have not found them their place. When you see others who celebrate people and can appreciate it, it's because they have found security in their place. And let me tell you this. Destiny is like a relay. That means... If God desired that I run with my purpose and hand it to this man and he hands it to this man that means if I refuse to leave purpose I'm punishing these people God is too merciful to allow them suffer for my carelessness he will put a replacement to do that work this is what is happening to many people you can look at someone and say but this is my assignment another person had to take it because for every time you delay there are multitudes suffering and god loves you but he loves them too he will not submit people in pain because you have refused to rise if i did not rise as a man of god god loves me but he will have to raise somebody who will bridge it The refusal to discover and find your place can cost you your bishopric. He said, his bishopric let another take. Ah, God, don't replace me. I'm ever available. Ever available. Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through me. Whatever you want to say Lord you can say through me whoever you want to lift Lord you can lift do not live the kind of life where you see someone doing what you know this is your assignment when God finds out that you are careless over your assignment, he will look for someone who is faithfully doing his and has increased capacity. He will honor him and add your assignment to him. This is why you find out that some people start ministry and life not intending to do certain things. But because God searches for available vessels and they are not there, he comes to them and says, can I add this to you? I have seen that your stamina can take this. And you say, Lord, I love you. Bring it on. He will multiply their honor and still grant them that grace. Someone can start the ministry as an evangelist. But the prophet that God desired to raise is careless, not serious. When he should be born again, he's not born again. Filled with the Holy Spirit, he's still arguing about the Holy Spirit. When will you start prophesying to people? God will raise that evangelist who is available. The evangelist is going through the discipline of a prophet. God will add that prophetic to that man. 
you find out for five years he started with evangelism but right now he has switched even to the prophetic because God intends for his agenda to advance and if you become an interruption to his agenda believe me he loves you but he will find the replacement this is one thing I know about God when you know you will be serious with God there is nobody who is indispensable no sir no sir don't say God lacks men there are men who don't make the mistake of Elijah to say I'm the only one there are 7,000 others David Christian Center if God has given you the privilege to be a head of department to lead a unit do not ever let it get to you that I am the only one it is just by meritocracy no sir because God can pick ordinary people and place something on their lives and grant them the grace to excel are we learning very quickly the next decision that you have to make is the decision to be healthy and to be physically strong you will think this is a simple decision till you die decision to be healthy and to be physically strong many of you who have listened to my teachings you've heard me make a confession there pastor that a time came during my retreat usually I examined myself against these benchmarks and for three years in a row I found out that the worst performing area in my life was my health I was preaching the gospel healing the sick casting out demons but the Lord began to caution me if you need to live long make sure you pay attention to this body and I made up my mind that every time I see death in the pot I drive it away the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 19 and 20 just write for reference 1 Corinthians 6 19 and 20 that your body does not belong to you he says do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and he says to glorify God in your body and your spirit which are God's carelessness over your health is sin it took a lot for that body to arrive remember it took a lot for that body to arrive the moment you are careless with your body just look at a barren woman who is trusting God for the fruit of the womb then you respect the gift of a body that God gave you let me tell you this based on the law of territory the only legitimate access you have to this realm is when you have a body no matter what is what is fine with your spirit if there is no body you cannot function here so satan's assignment among the many strategies to destroy you is to cause your body to so deteriorate that your spirit can no longer exist there then it will leave that's why God anointed doctors. That's why God gave the healing anointing. These are all efforts to preserve your body. Make that decision. Don't be careless with your body. Don't be careless with your health. Pay attention to it for the sake of the destinies that depend on you. Why are demon spirits illegal on earth? Because they don't have bodies. Even the Son of God as the Word, when he needed to come into this domain, the Holy Ghost had to walk carefully with a woman. If Mary refused to donate her womb, he would have had to go to another virgin to now talk to her. The same thing Zechariah asked was the same thing Mary asked. God punished Zechariah and left Mary. Mary said, how shall these things be? You thought you would now say, okay, you are joking with me. He had to explain the power of the highest will come on you and then you will now be pregnant and that which will come from you and all of that and she now said be it unto me that's how jesus arrived every time you are tempted to be careless with your body think of a family trusting god for the gift of a child then you will know that the body is a very expensive thing if you lose it another one cannot come i science has not perfected transferring spirits from one body to the other i'm not sure that has been done that a dead healthy body 
they now look for a, 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 an alive person who is almost dying and now transfer the spirit. So I want you to make up your mind that you will be healthy. There are many people, 25, 30, 35, you see them and you say, guess, and people say 51. You say, God, God forbid. How can you say I'm 51? Old, wrinkled, talking, you are not clear, you are not smart, you are not alive. You go for a job interview, they tell you to go out because they suspect you are already... No, no, no. Make up your mind. That in the name of Jesus, I will be healthy. Say it. Say in the name of Jesus. I make a decision that I will be healthy. That I will be healthy. Go and step you about it. There are many of you who have had nutritionists, nutritionists, health people, or diet people. Go and buy the truth. Buy the truth. Expert in that area with results. What is making you? I'm, I'm you are older than me, but you are looking fresher than me. What is the secret? And he says, Sit down, take notes, and go and do likewise. Please be healthy. Do you know? Especially for those of us who are men of God, statistics has shown that most men of God who work in the apostolic, the prophetic, the ministry of signs and wonders, they almost don't cross 80. Because there is something the anointing does to your physical body. You know that? By the time you stand on that, it's like holding a high tension wire for a long time, every day for a long time. Your body, there is a skill to preserving the health of that body under the influence of intense glory. Most of us just keep receiving a way of interpreting prosperity just because you suffered growing up you suffered things did not work you knocked on doors they didn't open when there is a psychological revenge mission so you get back and believe by punishing yourself like that you are appeasing your past hallelujah and then some of us, the discipline to see food and leave it. Do you know, listen, do you know gluttony is a spirit? Anything you have must finish before you rest. It's a spirit. You can discipline yourself. Believe me when I tell you this. You can't do much with God and with destiny if you don't have control over food. Ask great people. Most people hate January because usually most, whether in your prayer group or in a church, there's some kind of fasting. There are people who don't have personal fasts in a month. Ah! In Africa, please repent. Please repent in the name of Jesus. You need strength and capacity. Especially if you're a man of God here, you're a priest, you're a father. The Bible gives us a medical advice that if you don't plan to walk, don't eat. It's an advice. He who does not walk should not eat. It's an advice that the moment you keep piling food without walking, you are dying. So go back home and discipline yourself and trust God for grace. Many Africans are already dead while they walk. We have to trust God to live a long time. I don't know about you, but no devil would take my life before my time. The fullness of my days I will fulfill. Are you in agreement with me? I pray over everyone here at David's Christian Center. The spirits that caught men, cut short their lives and their destinies. May it be far from you in Jesus' name. Please sit down. Let me five minutes and let's finish these decisions and I speak over your life. Number five. What is the fifth decision? If you've been sleeping, wake up. 
the decision to be financially independent uh -huh. the fifth decision that you must make is a commitment that I must I must sort this issue of lack and want and financial struggles this is not just bowing down to the flesh this is not just some carnal pursuit for money remember we are kingdom people and everything we deal with is with respect to our desire to see Jesus glorified and to see him revealed can I tell you this dear brothers and sisters people of God do not let anyone downplay the necessity of supplies in your actualizing destiny you reject this truth you will spend your life paying the price Proverbs 22 and verse 7. Who would know that this kind of scripture will be in the Bible? Read it with me, please, if you're a Christian. Ready? One, two, read. That the rich rule it over the poor. That means being poor has a dangerous side effect. And it says the borrower is servant to the lender. If you are an intelligent person and you want a servant, how do you make that servant from this scripture? Make the best a borrower. Africa, you see it now? Nigeria, you see it now? That whoever is a borrower must also be a servant. So instead of calling you a servant, I create an economic name and I call you a... Ecclesiastes chapter 9 from verse 13. Don't forget this story for the rest of your life. Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 13. Please look up. This wisdom have I seen also under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. Next verse, please. There was a little city and few men within it. And there came a great king against it and beside it and built great bulwarks against it. Next verse. Please help me read. One, two, read. Now, there was found in it a poor wise man. What a description. And he, by his wisdom, delivered the city. Uh -huh. Yet, no man remembered the same poor man. The story concludes with this. Go back to verse 16 now. Not 13, you took us back. Then said I, read with me now. Wisdom is better than strength. Uh-huh nevertheless the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard that a man by his wisdom saved a land and they swept him under a carpet economic empowerment is part of the dominion pillars you cannot truly walk in dominion until there is dominion in terms of finances now there are people who have taught this from a carnal standpoint and they continue to fuel lust in people and make people you lie down on people's cars lie down on their compound snap in front of their gates that's not how to be prosperous but can i tell you one of the decisions you must make up your mind to do is to wave poverty goodbye and insist that it waves you back There are many temptations that are not necessary when God has helped you. Are we in agreement? Yes, sir. Lack and want can drive you to do things you never believed you would do. Believe me. I believe that it is a prayer point in the heart of your man of God and his dear wife to see a church every leader who loves God and loves the people given to him among the many things you seek to see captured in their lives and their Christian experience a life of economic dignity a life of economic dignity a life of economic dignity imagine that I came here now and I'm thinking of some bills to pay and all of that and God has given me the prophetic and I can see your account number what do you think is going to happen I will easily yield to that temptation and say, Mr. I'm looking at 100 million. Don't act like it's not there. I will call the account number and tell you, look, 
just respect yourself the God who showed me that thing and God is saying me I gave you this as a gift prosperity is a weapon it can shield you from many things many things many things and at the end of this service I'm going to be speaking over your life that in the name of Jesus this year even when men say there is a casting down you will prosper in a way that you want to run away from your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ there are so many things that are not prayer points they just need supplies one of my one of my dear sons in the ministry will say that prosperity will reduce your your prayer request and increase your prayer life that means you spend time praying but most of your prayer will be worship and praying in the spirit there are people who go to pray and for six hours they've not started praying in tongues yet because of the way the needs are plenty at the end of it there is no edification because you've strangled the part of prayer that is made for edification at the altar of your needs I made a decision years ago that I will never be poor this is not a carnal man's declaration I have studied poverty carefully and I've seen what it can do to a glorious destiny I don't know if you make up your mind to like it but let me counsel you remember our teaching here is choose life don't hope that you will be blessed you must make that decision this night that I'm tired of this thing. I'm tired of this. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bas kana kata branda kete kato. Kete branda kata pa kato skoto pre kete kene kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.